Hey guys, welcome back to another one of Dr. Monroe's material science videos. In this video, we're going to be dis discussing crystal math and crystallography. I'm going to give you a couple of examples to try to clarify what we went over last class period. So in crystal math, we talked about vectors and we talked about planes. Um, for crystal vectors, what we learned was that the vector was normalized relative to the crystal itself. And so I'm going to give you an example of um, kind of the differences and similarities across different crystal types. So if we have two crystals, so one of them is cubic, this is the one on the right, and the other one is orthorhombic, this one on the left, if we have a vector that is the same in both crystals and looks like this. It goes from the origin to that um, distance right there. Those vectors are exactly the same in real space. They point in the same exact direction. But in relation to the crystal, they point in different directions. And we'll see what we mean by that. So this crystal to the left, let's say, for instance, this is the C edge. Let's say the C is equal to two angstroms, which is, you know, the distance of each one of these little marks. Um, this distance right here, which would be B, is equal to four angstroms. And this distance right here, A, is equal to three angstroms. And this is just a hypothetical crystal. This crystal on the right, the C axis, is equal to only two angstroms. The A axis is e or the B axis rather is equal to two angstroms and this A axis is equal to two angstroms. So for a cube we actually say that the unit cell edge length is only A and A is equal to one number. So when we start trying to describe this vector we can break it into components in the different directions. So um, this orthorhombic one the component in the x direction is that long. And the way we describe this is we say that that distance would be one angstrom. And in relation to the side A, it is equal to one third of the side A. And then we can do that, the same thing with the z component. The z component, we can see that this vector, this component of that vector, is two angstroms. And if we compare it to the side c, we'd see that it is one times that side c. So now let's turn our attention to the other vector, in, or the vector in the cubic system. So the component in the x direction for this one is going to be equal to one angstrom. And, but unlike the orthorhombic crystal, this is equal to one half of A, not one third of A. And this component in the z direction is equal to two angstroms. And that is equal to 1 times c. Okay. And to distinguish between the two, I'm going to say this is c prime, b prime, and a prime, just to show you that it's in the, it's in the cubic crystal system. So now we have the projections on the different um, axes. And you'll notice on both of them, the vector has no projection along y, so therefore it is zero for both. So if we start to follow the list of um, kind of procedural list to determine what vectors these are, um, the next step is to read off those projections. So the projection in the x, y, and z is along x would be one third the unit cell in that direction, y would be zero, and z would be one full length in that unit cell direction. 
and we need to find a common um, factor and so we need to multiply by 3 so it would be 3 0 sorry 1 0 3 and then we put it in square brackets and so for this vector in the orthorhombic crystal system it is 1 0 3 that's the description of that vector now if we look on this other side on the cubic system x prime y prime and z prime what we'd see is that in the x direction instead of going a third of the unit cell length in that direction we only go one half in y prime there's no component and therefore it's zero and z is the same as in the orthorhombic or the c-axis is the same and therefore it's one unit cell edge length in the z direction and so again we have to find a common factor and so this would turn into one zero two we put it into square brackets this would be the vector that describes uh, this would be the number that describes this vector in the cubic system so now we have something that's very interesting we have two vectors and they point in exactly the same direction in Cartesian space in a Cartesian coordinate system but if we take that uh, the vectors and put them into the relative crystal um, uh, coordinate system they will be different so that um, we're going to do something very similar um, and we're going to look at planes so we're going to see how the different crystal systems will affect different planes. So if I told you that I want you to draw the 1, 1, 1 plane in the orthorhombic system and the cubic system, what we'd do is we'd follow the, the procedure for um, determining plane normals, because remember, this 1, 1, 1 plane is the normal to that plane, that vector is the normal to that plane. And if we were to start drawing it, we'd follow the reverse order of, of the list of the procedure. And so that procedure tells us, okay, we need to take the inverse and all that other stuff. This is fairly simple to do, and we can easily show or easily see that in the orthorhombic system, it will intersect the x-axis at 1. It'll intersect the y-axis at 1 and the z-axis at 1. Now, remember, this is one unit cell edge length very similar to the vectors. It's not one angstrom, it's a um, one unit cell edge length. And therefore, the plane, the 111 plane, in the orthorhombic system will look like this. Now, if we drew the 111 plane in the cubic system, it will intersect the x-axis at one unit cell distance, the y-axis at one unit cell distance, and the z-axis at one unit cell distance. And so if we draw the plane for this um, 1, 1, 1 normal vector, we'd see that it's this plane right here. And to kind of show you, if we take this blue plane and kind of superimpose it onto here, it would go between here, here, and here. So even though we have the same math, it's the 1, 1, 1 plane in both crystal systems, because they are different, because the edges of the unit cell are different, they will actually have different normal vectors if we look at it in a Cartesian coordinate system. But in the crystal system, those vectors are exactly the same.